My name is Kyle Francis. Um, I'm an engineer with the Ministry of Education. Previously was an engineer with the Public Works Department and the Ministry of Health. I'm now with the Ministry of Education, assigned to the Project Management Unit. I'm now the Project Manager, Engineer for the Ministry of Education. This would be the Kayan High School Technical Join Room and it's a program that's been sponsored currently by BNTF, Basic Needs Trust Fund. I'm actually a member of the BNTF Oversight Committee representing education, uh, so I'm familiar with what is happening as far as education is concerned as far as BNTF. Now, when this project was, was first introduced, it was to renovate a classroom that is now housing the technical drawing department. We at the Ministry of Education, we looked at it again. We took a second look and decided that there were some challenges and we decided to move, I uh, proposed to the BNTF to move from the classroom to an existing structure that was on the Cairn High School compound, which was not being used. And so we got to this stage where we are demolishing the existing structure and replacing it with a new structure, which, it, which will now house the technical justice. Yes, of course, one of the main reasons why the structure was not being in use was there were earlier issues of asbestos. We, there were asbestos found in the structure. It's, it's an old structure that was, that's been there a long time. It's a steel structure with um, concrete black walls and the ceiling had in asbestos. It was first renovated. Uh, the asbestos was first removed a few years back. But since we have now decided to use it, put the building back into use, we have decided to take it on completely, get rid of all the asbestos, all the asbestos, and we build a new building. Here. Moving forward, the Basic Needs Trust Fund, BNTF, they did the drawings, the bid documents, everything is now in place to start construction. The removal of asbestos, the demolition, that is supposed to be take place right away. We are ready to move forward and to reconstruct a new building. The building, the contractor who won the project is a Mr. Mark Laughlin of Spooner's Care. He won the contract and what we are going to do, we are going to demolish all the walls, the roof, the steel framing, and we can shop with new concrete walls, new concrete columns, and a new roof with galvalume, PVF to galvalume sheeting, etc. The project is a 90 days project. So we know that if it's a 90 days project, it has to go on while school is in session. Some part of it must take place while school is in session. As unfortunately, we only get at most what, six, seven weeks in the summer. So we can't wait until summer to do all the work we have to do in schools. So we have to try and, as best as possible, do construction while school is going on without interrupting school. This project is a 90 day project, as I mentioned earlier, and we are due to start immediately. Well, the, the management team and the principal at the Cairn High School have, have been in on all the discussions as far as demolition, as far as reconstruction, and they have made the proper arrangements along with um, the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Health and everybody to make sure that the school proceed as normal and the there is no danger to the children. As it is now, we are currently doing a project at the Cairn High School and we have, we have managed with, of course, with the school help, the principal and the management team to cordon off that section that we're now working on and no interference with the school right now. So we are sure that we can do the same here. One of the reasons for moving this, this building from the classroom as I mentioned earlier, which was on the second floor of one of the, one of the buildings, is to make sure that everybody, everybody, have access to this building. So we know it, this building is on the ground floor, there's no steps to go in and out of the building, so if we have a physically challenged student, they can actually, you know, utilize this, this, this um, technical drawing room. We have the technical, the current technical drawing room is a simple classroom, they are just doors, windows, etc. What we are doing now, we are creating a space where it's, number one, it's going to be air conditioned. The, the electrical and the data services in this building would allow us to move into the current 
age where everybody moved into computers and technology. So this would allow Kiana High School to move into that direction. So we have prepared this classroom for that. Well, I'm Curtis James, and I own and operate uh, local business called Pro Surface Cleaning Services. And as it says, we specialize in cleaning of surfaces within the Federation. A request was made of us to do some cleaning um, on the site with respect to the removal of, or the possible re final removal of asbestos, which was found on the premises some years ago. We are treating it as if it is an asbestos cleanup. Therefore, it's, we are doing a three-stage uh, process at this particular facility, uh, that is, uh, first, firstly, we're going to be doing a, a wet cleanup. That is, we're going to be spraying the surfaces and then doing a wipe off, wipe down. Secondly, uh, we're going to be spraying the metal surfaces with another solution, which would be allowed to dry. And uh, thirdly, we are going to wash the general area where the cleaning process is taking place. Asbestos, in, by large, is safe until disturbed. Having said that, because we are demolishing the building, it means that the fibers that can possibly be there will be disturbed. And as, and as a precaution to that, that is why we are doing the cleaning. The first a cleaning agent, as I said, that is um, going to be for the wipe down. You, what happens is that you spray it on, and uh, like your bathroom cleaner, when you leave it for a few minutes and it pulls any dirt and fibers that are on the surface, it pulls them together and then you just simply wipe it off. The second agent is an agent which creates a barrier. That is, if there is anything on the surface of the metal, that second agent, when sprayed on, is going to stick and dry on the metal. And so if anything is there, it becomes, it's an insulator between the, the, the environment and the metal. And so it cannot escape. Once those two agents have been activated, the third precaution is that the material be buried. But you don't just bury the, the, the debris in the soil just like that. By international standards, the material, the debris, must be wrapped in plastic and uh, then sealed and buried. And that is the same process that we're going to follow here. That the material is going to be wrapped in plastic here in St. Kitts, right there at the site. Then it would be wrapped, packed on the trucks and taken away. The trucks will be also be covered during transportation. All of the chemicals are firstly biodegradable, secondly water-based and uh, perhaps most important is that the chemicals or the cleaning agents that we use have been certified by our local Bureau of Standards and by Mr. Riley's office in the Ministry of Health. The process has involved many, many, many parties. Um, as I said, from the Bureau of Standards, the Ministry of Health, uh, Mr. Riley, Solid Waste Management, and we are working together as one team to accomplish this goal. And the goal is to do the cleanup, sensitize the community, and minimize any risk that, the, that can be derived from the cleanup.